Hey everyone, I'm Amy Cavell. This is Justin Bozak, owners of Remax Revolution. Today we are excited to welcome you to episode three of our American Dream Show at the Jersey Shore. In our last episode, we had the chance to feature Lavalette, which is known for being a family resort town. But today we get to feature beautiful Bradley Beach. This beach community is located in Monmouth County between Ocean Grove and Avon by the Sea. It has just about 4,200 full-time residents, but during the summer, it's bustling with 30,000 tourists and beachgoers on a regular basis. Bradley Beach is known for its incredibly clean beaches along with this boardwalk, where tons of people come every day during the summer to walk, bike, and run. Also, along Ocean Avenue, there's a ton of activities where you'll find mini golf, a beachfront playground, and also a natural preserve called the Maritime Forest. There's also a ton of cool events, such as the July 4th fireworks, line dancing, and the summer concert series right here, and so much more. We're looking forward to showing you the rest of what Bradley Beach has to offer. Now let's go meet up with Rich Davison, check out an amazing property that he just listed. It is literally just a stone throw away from the ocean. We'll see you there. What's going on everybody? We are now at 104 Third Avenue, just steps to the beach. And we're gonna take a quick tour of this gorgeous house with our agent Rich. Hey Rich. Good morning Justin, how are you? Good, good to see you. You too, another great beach day. Absolutely, beautiful day. Thanks for taking the time to show us this awesome house. Well, thanks for having me out today. No problem. So I know you lived in Bradley Beach for some time and you just came back. Yes. Can you tell us about some of the favorite things? Well, I think we uh, have the best selection of yearly international restaurants. Uh, we have a train station, which is good for commuters. Uh, recently opened microbrewery. And we have a 90 year old cinema uh, that a private group is funding to reopen. Oh, cool. And a little uh, history, Jack Nicholson actually was an usher back in the 50s and 60s, so if you can imagine him in the aisle with a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> and then down the beach, of course, uh, everything is reopening as we speak. Um, there's live entertainment, there's a 5K run, fireworks, and then anything from running, fishing, to taking a therapeutic stroll on the boardwalk. Very cool. So. Um, let me introduce you to this 3,700 square foot custom built seashore colonial. Uh, the first thing to greet you is this nice mahogany porch. Actually before fiberglass, mahogany was the main wood for building boats. Right. Uh, so that being said, come on aboard and I'll show you the journey. I'm excited to see it. Great. Go. Wow, this is great, Rich. Thank you. Um, Take us well, on this tour. Well, the home features four levels of living space. You have nice natural hardwood floors throughout. Right. A dual fireplace. Very nice. Uh, what I like to call a timeless sands in the hourglass kitchen. Oh, wow, beautiful. And the floor plan is just ideal for entertaining. Absolutely. I can see a lot of people having a nice gathering here for, uh, for these beach days. And by the way, once word gets out that you have a house by the ocean, friends and family who have not called you in years will be calling you. Oh, I'd keep that a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it could be good or bad. <laughs> Absolutely. So I heard the views from upstairs are amazing. Uh, Justin, they're difficult to describe. You have to see them for yourself. Come on up, be happy to show them to you. Awesome. Wow, I can see what you're talking about. These views are amazing. Well, isn't it true everybody uh, these days would love a good night's sleep? So substitute your melatonin for these perpetual breezes, the sounds of the breakers, give you a good night's sleep, which will certainly help you kickstart your morning. You have a nice private bath, a steam shower, whirlpool, and for the rest of the family, it's three additional bedrooms and a third floor loft.
Wow, Rich, you're right, man. This is an amazing view. Thank you. It's, uh, it'll be 35 years next week I've been doing real estate, and more than half are vacation homes for people. And you probably hear this, you know, where they don't need to buy a second home. And I say, that's true. People don't buy these because they need them. They buy them because they want to, they work hard, and they want to create memories. Right. So I always tell people, if you wait for the moment in your life where you need to buy a second home, that moment will never come. Uh, wouldn't you agree on that? Very true, Rich. Thank you. Well, thanks for taking the time to take us for this tour. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Next up, we're going to take you downtown Bradley Beach, where Abram Cabela is going to show you one of the hottest restaurants, Bix. everybody, we're at downtown Bradley Beach. As you can see, it's pretty vibrant over here. Got the showroom cinema behind me, new construction happening on 3rd Avenue. The train station's only four blocks from this location, and it also heads to the city. But today, we're focusing on Vic's Italian Restaurant. They've been a staple in this community for over seven decades, and they truly showcase their perseverance and heart by keeping that tradition going. We're gonna sit down with the owner and see what it's all about. It gives me great pleasure to sit down with one of the co-owners, Travis Simbluski of Fix Italian Restaurant. Thanks for allowing us to feature your restaurant today. Oh, we're delighted to have you guys here. So, Travis, this restaurant has an incredible multi-generational history behind it. Can you share with us a little bit about that history and how the family has continued the tradition? Well, uh, I guess it all goes back to 1933. Uh, Vic originally opened up Vic's Tap Room, and uh, that was kind of the beginning of it. Uh, 1933 in history is real important because that's when Prohibition ended. So Vic ran out and got one of the first liquor licenses around, which we have hanging up in our waiting room. Wow. And then um, uh, things kind of stayed the same for a little while, just, just running a bar. When his son got a little older in 1947, he said, hey, Dad, let's, let's open a restaurant with the bar. So that was how this restaurant kind of grew. It grew from just a bar, and then we needed a kitchen. We needed more seating space. It got busier. We need more seating space. So it you know, kind of got passed from Vic to his son, John, and then on to my father-in-law's generation, which would be, that would be third generation. And we're getting to the point where we now have the fifth generation working here, doing different roles, mostly serving or, or you know, helping customers. But uh, it's so nice to see that we've made it five generations. It's very rare that you can get a business that makes it that far. So how did you guys adjust to the pandemic shutdowns and limitations? Uh, well. It was difficult. I remember the very first day we sat down, my brother-in-law and I, and just said, what are we going to do? You know, here we are, governor just shut us down. Uh, we didn't know at first we were going to allow to do uh, takeout only. So as soon as we found that out, we immediately just switched gears, started planning, uh, rearranged the restaurant. Uh, the place was a mess. I mean, we had stuff stacked everywhere around here. But um, we went to a takeout only model. We had a great takeout business before. We decided to, to really just stoke that fire, let's get it going. But if it wasn't for our ability to adapt and on a daily basis, uh, we would not have made it. And I also have to just thank our employees because uh, it wasn't just my brother-in-law and I said, here's the system, this is what we're doing. Every employee kind of had a piece of this because somebody would say, hey, we could do this differently, or we could do that differently. And the, the collaborative effort was, was just amazing, you know, and the system that we used was truly collaborative. So Travis, this is one of my favorite parts about uh, visiting uh, various restaurants and we get to uh, showcase some of your popular dishes. So can you tell me a little bit about some of these dishes? Okay, well, the first is the chopped dani pas. That's our, uh, our salad. It's probably the staple item that everyone always orders. And a lot of times it's paired with pizza, 
but it's usually paired with pretty much any dish. Uh, as far as pastas go, we have our uh, penne with vodka sauce. Uh, a lot of places do penne vodka, we have our own take on it, but I think people really like our version because we sell just tons of it. I mean, we're, we, we're making it every day. And then these uh, uh, chicken marsala is uh, another popular, it's probably my favorite. Uh, one of those things where you gotta saute it and uh, they cook off the wine. Uh, and the mushrooms and everything. It's just with pasta, over pasta like that is probably my favorite way to have it. And then there's pizza. I mean, you know, our website address is vixpizza.com. Uh, pizza is a huge part of our business and really where we started from. And, you know, that's our traditional thin crust pizza that we do. The large plain pizza is probably the, the most common. I mean, guys, you heard it from Travis, one of the co-owners from Vic's Italian Pizza. Over 70 years of family traditions and recipes and, and these amazing dishes. Uh, they're located on uh, Main Street and Bradley Beach. You heard his website, vixpizza.com. Come and check it out, guys. Thanks again, Travis. Thank you.